Greetings folks, time for another Past Planes episode. I think we're up to number about 14. Uh, I let it go for quite a while, so I have lots and lots of planes to talk about. Uh, I'm gonna have to go through them pretty quickly, otherwise we're never gonna catch up. Um, so first up, where, where are we? Back at the uh, start of 2018, I think now. Uh, first plane we're gonna look at is the what I call the Boxler wing. It was a small wing with a Sipkill airfoil, which is a specific wing, a flying wing airfoil, uh, that I made out of a discarded polystyrene fruit box from our local fruit market. It was kind of an exercise just to see if that material would be uh, okay for building planes or doing hot wire cutting. Uh, I didn't put any spars in it, I just covered it with uh, packing tape and some sort of strapping tape top and bottom to act as spars and it worked absolutely perfectly well. Um, it's pretty rough cut, it had a, quite a thick trailing edge on the um, elevons, six millimetres or something like that, and it didn't seem to mind that at all. It actually made a, a really cool uh, swishing noise as it flew past. It was a fast, nippy little wing, lots of fun. And it proved that that material and that technique worked very well. I didn't keep it, it was just an experiment. I've sort of taken the gear off and moved on to something else. Next up was my scratch build of the 1908 Blerio 11, uh, a sort of a historical retro monoplane designed and built in France. I think it was the first plane to fly across the English Channel, maybe, something like that. But I just wanted to... Uh, continue on my theme of making retro uh, scale planes. They're the sort of scale planes that I really like, those really old retro style planes, uh, Tiger Moth, Fokker DR1 and this Blerio 11. It had sort of big fat hot wire cut wings to simulate the um, canvas and rib design. Uh, the original actually had an open uh, framework body First of all, I made it with a, a foam board body, which worked very well, just to see if it was going to work. Now, more recently, I've changed it to a sort of a, a wooden dowel open framework body. I want to go even further and do the full body out of the open framework and just cover it in and, and use the, the existing wings that I've got. But uh, a lot of fun, worked well. It's always a problem with these retro planes, getting the CG far enough forward so you sort of have to stretch the nose out in a non-scale way so you can get the battery far enough forward because of course back in those days they had really heavy cast iron engines that sort of sat in front of the CG and um, needed, and provided all the weight that they needed to, to balance it which we don't have these days. I still have it now, it's uh, hanging on the wall, occasionally I take it out for a fly um, but I want to still keep working on that one and make it even more authentic. Next up was the Ishin Mirage E500. This is an interesting high-tech toy, I'd call it. Not really my favourite kind of plane, but they are very interesting to, to play with and work out how to use them. So you could get it to hover and fly like a quad, basically. Uh, same movements as a quad, or you could flip it into horizontal mode to fly horizontally like a wing, but it used differential thrust for turns. It didn't use the ailerons at all, so in sort of the stabilised horizontal mode uh, you'd get these flat skidding turns which are really weird they almost off camber turns then you could flip it into wing mode and, and fly it like an all flying wing uh, i find these high-tech toys rather expensive um, i wouldn't pay that sort of money for these things but uh, they obviously sell to people with enough money i suppose it's not a pilot's model really uh, more like a hybrid quad plane uh, for tech kids who knows I eventually pulled it apart because I wanted to use the motors and servos for other things, so uh, that, that's where that one went. Okay, next up is the Mini DLG 980mm. It's a built-up balsa uh, pod and boom style Mini DLG. I love DLGs, full-size DLGs. I really didn't like this one. It's in the running for the worst model I've ever reviewed, I think. Uh, the main problem was it didn't glide very well at all. It uh, very difficult to launch, it would roll over to one side and it was so weak that uh, after a couple of flights uh, the thing sort of broke in my hands. Um, total waste of time in my book, they're reasonably expensive, uh, I would avoid them like the plague, I really don't like them at all. My flying friends have had them as well and had exactly the same experience after a few sessions they just crack, the boom cracks, 
uh, it breaks, um, not worth repairing. Next up is the Volantex Ranger 2000, uh, easily in my top five best planes. Absolutely love these Volantex Rangers, the 1600 and the two meter. The wings are directly swappable, it's exactly the same fuselage, you just click the wings in and out to change between the two sizes. This is my favorite uh, long range FPV cruiser, not that I do long range FPV, but my call it my FPV cruiser. Works as a glider, works as a slope soarer, Brilliant for FPV. The only hassle, and Matt Ogborn pointed that this out, is that it's actually quite difficult to get all the gear sitting in it. There's plenty of space, just there's not much uh, of a hole in there to get uh, get all the gear in. I have managed to put it in up here, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a pain sort of getting all the wires. Can be done. You just have to be uh, persistent, I suppose. Um, but the flying characteristics cannot be beaten with this this plane. Uh, the Volantex Rangers. I just absolutely love them. I love the fact that the servos are accessible and down the back here. Nice big control surfaces, uh, big elevator, big rudder, tough plastic fuselage. Uh, the wings are an upgrade from the original Ranger. What was it? The Do they call it the Raptor or something like that? Uh, and the Phoenix 2000 wings. Uh, they used to have a bit of a tip, tip stall tendency. Uh, they've corrected it in these later Phoenix Ranger Ranges. Just easily one of my favourite planes. Absolutely love it. Highly recommended. I run it with uh, separate ailerons and flaps for the, the full, almost the full house setup. I've got a Matek F405 flight control board in there running INAV, uh, FPV on there. This one has an L9R receiver on there and I should try the uh, R9 uh, setup as well. I haven't got around to doing that yet. Okay, next up we have the Toro wing. Well, this is a sort of a scratch build. Uh, wings were cut by a friend of mine uh, based on the design of the Toro wing, which you can't buy anymore. I don't think it's available. But it's a, what is it, about a 900, one metre wingspan wing. It's uncovered, minimal spars, kept as light as possible uh, to make a super, super slow flying wing. This is great fun. Cruising around on a on a calm day, flying slower than walking pace. Just absolutely love it. It's very, very flexible, so you can't go fast. You can't fly it in strong winds. What do I have on it? 2204, 2300 KV, uh, 6x4 prop, and I run it on a 1300 3S, I think. Good fun. I, re I love real slow flyers, and this is this is one of them. Do a search for Toro Wing and you might find some old references to it, but uh, sadly not available anymore. It's pretty basic uh, airfoil. I think it's just a Clark Y airfoil, so you need some reflex in the elevons. Uh, but good fun wing. Next up, we have the Sonic HD wing, which is uh, a, a very nice flying wing. Those wings are also used on the e -Sheen, one of the e uh, carbon centre-bodied Ishin Fury, I think it is, and they're very fast and efficient and don't have much of that yaw wiggle that a lot of wings have. I've only just recently got rid of that because I basically had to make space for more planes. They can sort of do a radical tip stall if you load them up and fly a little bit too slow, as my friend Michael found out. If you have the CG back too far, it will also tip stall, as I found out. But within its sort of flying parameters, it is just a beautiful flying, fast and efficient wing. Uh, really nice little slope soarer as well. Also can be fitted with a clear dome on the front, I think, but I never use the clear dome on the front because they always have reflections and they'll get scratched up pretty quickly with the way I fly, so uh, not suitable for me. Next up is the Avios Bush Mule. Uh, I bought this from Hobby King a couple of years ago when it was on sale. Uh, I wanted a big twin workhorse uh, cargo plane and this fits the bill beautifully. I love this plane. It has the bomb doors in there, so you can drop parachutes out and things like that. Looks like I've lost the, one of the fairings there. One of the downsides is it has very, very bouncing landing gear. So it's, it's super, super difficult to land it without giving it a couple of bounces along the way. Not a big problem, but uh, you know, you like to grease those landings and it, it takes a lot of, uh, well, you need a calm day basically and, and uh, good flying skills to be able to settle it down on the ground nicely. 
One of the mods I did was to add some extra uh, wing area because I wanted to be able to uh, fly it slower. Uh, again, this one will tip stall if you fly too slowly because it's sort of big and reasonably heavy. Um, the added wing area oh, I think made a big difference. I really like the way it flies now. I can sort of slow it right down. Uh, makes the control surfaces very large so uh, you have to sort of dial down the amount of control you have. Uh, I used this one recently to test the F6F, uh, F, what is it? F765 flight control board uh, with a, a head tracker and dual cameras and uh, all those goodies. A great workhorse, great for putting cameras on, highly recommended. It's a great plane. Okay, coming up next we have the Reptile Harrier Twin Pusher Wing. 1100 millimeter wingspan. It was kind of a big and fast wing. Very interesting with the twin motors. Some of the gear and fixing was very, very poorly designed, uh, like sort of carbon fiber plates uh, with brass bolts going straight into foam that just you can pull out with your little finger. Uh, very odd design, um, just more for looks over function, I think, but uh, a few mods uh, fixed that up for me. Uh, just gluing covers on rather than using brass bolts into foam, just ridiculous. Great flyer, very fast, nice and big so I could carry big batteries and cameras and things like that. Just had no place in my hangar, so I passed that on to a friend. Next up, we have the Little Glider, L-I-D-L. Uh, there's a big uh, craze on these worldwide a few they sort of keep coming back every now and then in the German supermarkets the little su supermarkets and um, they make one of the best chuck gliders that can be uh, transformed into an RC glider or a, or a powered plane uh, I followed the speeds to den uh, picture on setup where the wings uh, wrote full wing rotation independently act as uh, ailerons and elevator all together uh, it makes for a, a super fast spinning glider, uh, no elevator or rudder, uh, but almost impossible to do a, to do a loop. Uh, fun project, great plane for modding, if you can get your hands on it. I was lucky that uh, one of my viewers sent this to me, I think it was David Francis from the UK. Uh, internally grateful for that, David, thank you very much. I still have another body and... Uh, tail so I can do other things with it, which I will do one day uh, But yep, this is a great little fun glider and because not everyone in the world can get these gliders There's sort of a, a big craze trying to find something similar. I think there uh, some of the online sellers uh, are Realizing that these are popular and coming up with alternatives or similar copies or things like that, which is good Next up it was the Sonic F1 wing which was uh, designed to be a, a radically fast, tough little race wing, I suppose. So it's made from really dense, uh, tough foam, which was great. The airfoil was quite slim uh, and it was reasonably heavy, uh, high wing loading. So uh, it was uh, great flying flat out. It still had that big sort of bulbous front on it, uh, which detracts from the efficiency and the speed, I suppose, but uh, it's good for putting a camera in there. Uh, I thought the motor it came with wasn't right. Uh, it was a sort of a big, actually, it might be the motor that I put on the back of the uh, F35 jet recently. Went much better with a smaller mini quad motor on the back and a higher, higher revving, sort of smaller prop, uh, more in fitting with the style of the wing. Difficult to land because it comes in so fast, just doesn't slow down, uh, but Good fun flying flat out. It was uh, not the smoothest wing I've ever flown. It was a fair bit of wiggle and up and down all over the place, but uh, uh, one of the best fast wings, I think. Next on the list is the Volantex Ranger G2. This is a good little plane. It uh, has a foam fuselage, unlike the other Rangers, which have the sort of blown plastic. Still has the click in wings, nice and easy. Um, it has a, a spirit level bubble on the top there for some reason. Lots of space inside for putting in uh, flight control boards. So this is why I've kept this one. Uh, although it's sort of a, you know, just the the boring pusher style plane, it's, it's a good size and has good ex accessibility in here for testing out flight control boards and, and cameras and stuff like that. A good little demo model so I can demonstrate programming tips as well because of the size. Uh, yeah, I like it. I'm going to hang on to this one. I did a comparison video between this and the Bixler 1. 
And I think the Bixler one is a nicer plane to fly. It actually is more efficient, faster maybe, flies better. But this one has the accessibility in here, lots of space, which uh, makes it a very useful little plane. Good beginner's plane too. Next up was my scratch build of the Mini Sky Hunter. I built this one because I wanted to try three millimeter Depron as a sort of a folded experimental airline style wing material and, uh, and for vertical stabilizer and horizontal stabilizer. And it works beautifully, fantastic. I love this plan form. It's, it's very adaptable. Uh, you can't really go wrong with this design. It was initially a little bit wiggly, so I've added some more tail area and extended the tail booms, give it a bit more sort of directional stability. Uh, it's just a tube with battery going in the front there, camera up on the top. So it's easy to build, very adaptable, can't go wrong with it. Uh, great fun, nippy little FPV plane. And sort of a good style of plane to try for your first scratch builds, I think, because uh, you're guaranteed success with something like this. Mini Sky Hunter scratch build, I guess you call it. Next up was the Bixler 1.1, which is another classic plane, classic pusher plane. Almost as good as the Bixler 2. It's a bit smaller, a bit nippier, not quite so much space in there. It does have a problem with overheating ESC. Uh, I'm not too sure why. It might be the style of ESC, the fact that there's no airflow over it at all inside the plane. Uh, a lot of people find this problem, that the ESC gets very hot. Um, so what I did with mine was uh, cut a hole in the side of the fuselage and uh, glued the ESC so that it's uh, in contact with the outside air and that improved the cooling problem and there's no problems with overheating or anything like that. Just a great little beginner's plane, throwing it around, slope soaring, FPV, even a little bit of thermal on a good day. Cool little plane, highly recommended, good first plane. Next up, we come to the Skyhawk. Uh, now, this was an A-tail, and you can see I've changed it into a, a Skyhunter style of tail, which I prefer. Uh, the A-tail that it came with it was a bit lacking in area, so there's a little bit of sort of instability in, in your. I as I said, I really like this Sky Hunter Skyhawk style of, of layout. Uh, it means you have heaps of space in there. Uh, actually, I've added a little bit of depth to this uh, battery bay here so I could put bit of bigger batteries in. Big variety of, of motors and prop size because you're sort of only limited by the... I've uh, got a Sunny Sky on there. Sunny Sky, what is it, 980 kV. Uh, a big, well, it might be a 10 inch prop. And I run it on 4S. I've increased the area of the horizontal stabiliser and the, and the twin vertical tails give it uh, great stability now. It's a good test bed for flight control boards because you can take the wing off and there's plenty of space under the wing for mounting the flight control board. Nice, fast, stable little uh, test bed, I suppose. Uh, good fun plane, I really like it. Uh, I much prefer it with the um, twin fin setup rather than the A-tail setup. Next up was the Windrider Fox Slope Sawer given to me by my friend Andrew Crampton. I think they were discontinuing them uh, at Windrider over in Hong Kong. So he snapped up a few and sent one to me. It was a really nice looking uh, scale uh, sloper, but I think the wings, uh, they're sort of too thin uh, to work well in foam. Same as the ASW28. They look fantastic, but they just don't work well in foam. Uh, they, yeah, I think for those slim, uh, thin wings, you need sort of stiff, thin, composite, uh, hard material. It looked fantastic, uh, but it was a tip-stalling nightmare on the slope. Every turn, it would drop a wing, so you had to be on the sticks the whole time. You just couldn't relax while you were sloping it. Sadly, that one's gone by the wayside. And finally, for this past planes, I think we've been ploughing through them, uh, it's the fin wing transformer, which was a strange big bat-like black EPP wing. Twin tractor motors or a single pusher motor. You could take out the centre sections to vary between a, a big wingspan and a shorter wingspan. I can't remember the sizes. And it had that sort of blow moulded um, plastic body with the different camera mounting positions and as with all the fin wing models they're designed to be packed down into a suitcase taken down to the field and and actually used as a, a workhorse for a camera carrier a mapping uh, platform or something like that it had industrial strength 
uh, metal hinges and clasps and clamps and things like that. Really uh, odd looking plane. Um, but it did the job. It uh, worked quite well. It sort of it was kind of flexy and creaky. Enormous uh, wing area. It had a really deep, deep wing cord. Um, flew rather nicely. Uh, had space to carry cameras. So yeah, interesting product. Uh, just pretty ugly really. It worked quite well in both configurations, the twin tractor or the single pusher. Um, very adaptable and interesting plane. Uh, but that is no longer with me. I've passed that on to a friend, so he's, uh, I haven't seen him fly it yet, so I don't know what he's doing with it. All right, so we've quickly rushed through quite a few past planes, uh, some good ones and some bad ones in there, and uh, that'll have to do it for the moment. See you soon with uh, episode 15. Oh,